I'm a dog trainer, also coach dog owners. Welcome to the live show. Hopefully everything is running smoothly and uh, you are able to see me and hear me. Uh, if you have any problems hearing and seeing me, let me know, please, in the uh, comments area, uh, in the chat area. Welcome to the show. Uh, this is a channel where we focus on training dogs without the use of treats, food, aversive tools like shock collars, prong collars, uh, choke chain collars, uh, without the use of domination, force, or being alpha. The only way that we're going to focus on training our dogs and teaching our dogs manner and well behavior and keeping them healthy and happy is by using play and pray as a reward. In my channel, I show you, teach you, and coach you to become an educated dog lover and how to become a, a, a responsible, a great dog lover, a great dog owner and how to use play and praise as a reward to train your dog. Welcome to the show. And uh, I wanted to go live and talk about a few of the myths and misunderstandings when it comes to dogs and dog training. Um, so I'm gonna go through a few of them, and have a little bit of a talk that I have prepared Meanwhile, if you have any questions, if you happen to be in the, in the live session, uh, please feel free to ask your questions in the chat line. And if you're not, if you're watching this when it's not live, uh, ask your questions, leave your questions in the comments area and I will answer them uh, shortly. So one of the first myths that people have or on misunderstandings that they have is that they say, you know what, my dog is trained. I've done obedience um, and my dog is trained. Uh, and I see that uh, also I can see the chats uh, coming in and we have uh, Andre, uh, Andrea, Andrea, Andrea Tass, 26. I hope I'm pronouncing it well. Uh, Hello, Aaron, that's Aaron, uh, <laughs> or sorry, yes, sorrow, yes, okay, you're, you're calling me, okay. Um, thank you for being here. My dog barks a lot, what can I do about that? Okay, so that's a good question. That's a very common question, which I'm gonna answer it in a moment. Uh, so yeah, feel free to ask your questions in the chat area. So, um, Andrea, this, Andrea, Tyus, 26, is asking how to stop uh, their dog from barking. Uh, barking is, uh, is a problem that many dog owners are dealing with. Uh, one of the things that you have to be aware of that dogs bark is a form of communication. They're not doing it to piss you off or anything. They're communicating something. So you have to find out, first of all, why is it that they're barking? What, what are they trying to communicate? Sometimes when they're communicating it, uh, they probably, most of the time is for excitement. Sometimes it could be for um, warning. They're warning uh, either us or, or uh, other creatures like other dogs that they are either afraid or scared of them or anxious about them. So they're warning them not to get close. Um, for example, for instance, maybe you may take your dog to a dog park and a person approaches your dog and your dog starts barking. So that's a warning barking that is telling you that person that don't come near me, I'm afraid of man when they approach straight to my face. Uh, so that's a warning. The other one, the excitement warning, uh, barking is for when they are excited to see you, excited to go to a park, excited to see anything. This happens, for instance, most dogs, um, when they are sitting by the window and they're watching outside, they see things come and go. They get excited and start barking at them. Um, either they want to, again, either they want to say, go away from my house or come to my house. I want to uh, have a party, come and join the party and let's play. So maybe you could tell me what is the main reason that your dog barks and then I can 
have a little bit more uh, better understanding and have, give you a clear uh, explanation. Uh, she barks when people walk by the house, but that happens a lot. So that's an example that I was just saying. Yes, yeah, so a dog who is paying attention to the window or activities outside of the house, they tend to bark. Either to tell them that, get away from my house, this is my property, don't get near, I'm here, I'm, I get anxious when people are passing by, or it's telling them, um, come and have a party in my house. So, oh, she barks as, as if telling them, go away from my house, so yes. So that could be because she's not feeling confident and, com uh, and comfortable in its environment. Um, the, there are several reasons why this happens. One of them is because they're mentally and physically not stimulated. So they take that opportunity of kind of guarding the house, paying attention to what's happening outside as a guarding duty, as a guarding job. Uh, so they start uh, being really serious about this job and this duty and they start uh, taking it uh, to the next level which is really barking and guarding the house. Uh, so what I, one of the suggestions that I have is uh, provide a lot of physical and mental stimulation, 70% mental stimulation, 30% physical stimulation for your dog. So your dog can relax and can uh, feel comfortable and uh, less anxious to be inside of the house. That's number one reason. Number one reason that's because they are not stimulated enough. Uh, they don't. They don't have a good. They didn't have a good um, activity throughout the day. So therefore, they focus and put their energy into, uh, you know, barking and guarding the house. So that would be my number one, focusing on providing more physical and mental stimulation. I have a lot of videos on my channel if you want to watch. Uh, if you search my channel, there's a search icon on my channel. Uh, you can search uh, stimulation. You'll come up with some videos. Try to watch those. Come up with some ideas how to do it. Uh, so that would be my number one tip. Number two tip would be um, what could be an example of mental stimulation? I take her for a walk at night for one hour approximately. Um, training could be mental stimulation. Um, you know, 15 minutes of training your dog, you know, doing training with your dog, let's say teaching it or making it, uh, making your training bulletproof for 15 minutes, if you focus on 15 minutes of training, which is mental stimulation, you'll see it, it, it is equal to an hour of walking your dog. It's that much effective. If you do it properly, if you, for 15 minutes, 20 minutes, or maximum half an hour you do training, it will become uh, very beneficial. So your dog's, uh, dog is gonna be stimulated properly. Training is that, you can play games that um, use the use the the use the brain. I have some games uh, examples in my channel as well. Uh, games that you can play with your dog that stimulates not only physically but also mentally. So that's another option. Uh, mental games would be something like um, even as simple as, for example, you tell your dog you put your dog in in an area that there's no window or uh, there's not much going on. So your dog is not focused on the activities outside. You can put your dog in some room and say, sit and stay or lie down and stay. So your dog's job now is to stay. So it's focused on the stay command rather than people walking by in the house, outside of the house. So the stay or wait becomes a job. That's another form of mental stimulation. So these are some ideas. So again, if you want to teach your dog sit and stay, I have videos on my channel as well. 
thank you very much. Uh, and uh, that is great. Thank you for your feedback. That is great to hear. Uh, red, I think it's red. Red P4 and 4. Thank you for being here. Uh, new channel, I'm about to get a beagle. Thank you for being here and thank you for, hopefully you have subscribed to the channel because I have tons of videos uh, about beagles and there are more beagle videos coming as well. I, and as you know, maybe, maybe no or not, I am a beagle owner myself. My beagle was supposed to be in the office today, but is outside playing with the dogs. <clears throat> so you're about to get a beagle. That's amazing. That's exciting. That's, I mean, you know, it's one of those breeds and dogs that I just love, fell in love with the breed in general. Uh, thank you for considering getting a beagle. I hope you're ready for the party uh, because they are party dogs. Uh, you're going to have, you're going to have a handful of things going on when you get a beagle, but if you do everything properly, uh, you will get a good, uh, good results uh, from them. Uh, let me share. I, I forgot that I can share videos on the chat line. So let me share with you uh, a link that you can go and start watching uh, all about beagles. I have several videos that I've done, a detailed, um, detailed uh, explanation, and I show a lot of information and share a lot of information about uh, beagles. I'm going to share the link. In the chat line, Let's see if it's going to work. Yes, so there it is. Uh, take a look at that uh, playlist. It's a playlist, several videos, gives you some ideas, some examples of how to train at the beagle, what you can get expect from a beagle, what you should know about beagles. Beagles are a great uh, breed of dogs. And uh, actually, last week I uh, uploaded a video about five of my favorite and easy breed for for new dog owners. Are you a new dog owner? Red four, red P four and four. Are you a new dog owner or experienced dog owner? Um, I just shared the video about five breeds that are easy for new dog owners. I didn't include beagles. I don't know if you noticed that or not. I didn't include beagles because beagles are not uh, so your experience. Great. Um, that's great. Uh, beagles are not ideal dog for uh, new dog owners. Many dog owners, they fall in love with the look and cuteness of a beagle, but they forget that this breed is a working breed, a breed that um, needs uh, some activities mental and physical simulation uh, to the next level. They are, <clears throat> they are very um, focused on scent, uh, so that can become a challenge. Uh, they do require a lot of training. You need to really focus on training and you will get great results. Um, please watch those videos. And meanwhile, if you have questions, let me know. Uh, you can leave the questions in chat line or in the um, comments area, whenever you come up uh, with any questions, you can leave questions in the, in the comments area of any of my videos and I will answer them. Um, uh, how, uh, there's a question, what do you think about uh, Kong toys? How about, how could you use them best? Uh, I, I don't mind using toys. Toys are good interact as long as they become interactive for the dog. Uh, it's good for temporary use. It's not something that, uh, first of all, toys in general. Uh, I don't think that it's a good uh, option or replacement for just like kids, you know, games on on um, uh, you know media kids uh, media games uh, are not as beneficial or uh, healthy as real games, right? Uh, real games, you go and play with other kids and physically you get involved with the game, like you play a basketball or football sports. I mean, that's more 
much more healthier than the game that you play on your console. Uh, I don't say, I don't mean that the game to play on console, it's not, you shouldn't do it. Yes, but it should be limited. It shouldn't be uh, just that. So the same thing applies to, uh, you know, toys. Toys shouldn't be the main form of uh, stimulation or interaction for a dog. Most dogs, they will be upset. They will become obsessed with toys. Just I've seen kids do, who play also human kids who play games all the time. They're obsessed. They're addicted. They're they're just too focused on toys. They're they forget reality of life and they don't really uh, focus on real activity. They don't know how to uh, deal real scenarios, real situations. Um, so when you give a toy to a dog, uh, that dog just becomes obsessed with that toy, focused on that toy and forgets about the real uh, scenarios in life, which is socializing with people, dogs and other uh, creatures. But when it comes to Kong, I would say anything that you're going to stuff the Kong, that when you could stuff the Kong, uh, freeze it, and then give it to a dog, it's best, the better. Uh, rather than putting anything in there and then giving it to the dog. They figure it out in a, very quickly how to get uh, things out, uh, and then they lose their interest. They just focus on getting the food out of the Kong. They don't really care about the Kong itself. It's just the food that it becomes a uh, center of attention. I, I hope you mean, I, you know what I mean. So uh, if you're going to put stuff it with food or treats or anything like that, make sure that it's frozen and then given to the dog so the dog is interactive uh, with the activity itself uh, rather than the Kong toy itself. Uh, I hope that answers your question. And sorry, I have my, okay, so I think I see better, yes. Uh, Tommy is in the house uh, saying hello, cool. Thank you for being here, uh, Tommy. Uh, and Amir Wolf, he says, uh, hello everyone. Halle, hello, Amir. Um, Red uh, P4 uh, and 4, he says, uh, my first dog was a golden retriever. Oh. Golden Retrievers are my second favorite breed of dogs. Uh, and Amir is saying my first was a Rhodesian Ridgeback. They're beautiful, great dogs as well. And uh, da, 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 I think I... Sorry, I'm running a little bit of allergy. <laughs> uh, okay, so I think I answered the questions. Uh, Uh, I mean, uh, Tommy, Tommy is asking, what is your first choice of dog breeds? Uh, for me, it has been always Beagles. Uh, that's because I just love the breed. I know the breed. Uh, one, I like their size. They're not big, huge dogs. They're not small dogs. I like their size. I like their fur color and fur size, length as well. They're, they're not too hairy. Um, I like their demeanor. I like their energy level. Uh, they can be high for a long period of time and then they, uh, they die down and calm down. So I like their energy that you can uh, work with them. So I, my favorite is Beagles. Has been Beagles always and it will be. Uh, yes, so I'm always going to have Beagles. Uh, I have uh, had their pictures. When, if you watch my videos, I have my picture of Jonah on the background, and sometimes I have a picture of Harvey as well. Uh, and Amir is asking, what is your opinion on wolf dogs? Uh, the hybrid dogs, in my opinion, are, they are not ideal for everybody. You know, there are certain breeds that are ideal for certain people. It's like, you know, um, you can't be, a, for example, a person who's, who has a quiet life, uh, chill person, 
uh, likes to knit, likes to go for quiet walks in the park, um, needs, needs, uh, has one or two friends and they hang out together. A quiet person like that, for example, you can't, it's not ideal to have a border collie. You know what I mean? So every dog is suitable for every kind of person and every person is suitable for a kind of dog. Uh, hybrid dogs are not for everybody. They're for dogs, dog owners who are very, um, uh, very experienced with dogs. I wouldn't want to have, even though I'm a dog trainer, I wouldn't want to have because they're they're very demanding. You know, you're you're crossing the line. Uh, any dogs uh, lower than hybrid dogs, you're you're crossing to that line that your your expectations. Uh, of the dog should be number one than yours. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, so for example, if you have a working breed or even a wolf dog, hybrid dog, um, it's not, your life is not about you anymore. It's about the dog, the wolf or the, <laughs> the border collie. Uh, because the border collie, border collie is going to run your life. You know, you have to do things to catch up with your border collie, with your wolf dog. You have to th do things in order for them to be happy and satisfied. Not, it's not about your life anymore. You, you give up on your <laughs> life and you are, uh, uh, you're dedicating your life to those breeds. So it's that, um, uh, it's that much of, um, I would say it's it, that's kind that much of uh, importance that you have to give to that breed. Uh, it's not for everybody. And Amir says makes sense. Great. Uh, well said, Saro. Tammy says thank you. Uh, I'm I'm walking uh, someone's border collie tonight. <laughs> yes. So you must be familiar with border collies. They're they're just um, they're just amazing dogs you know it's not that they're not a great dog they're amazing dog but they're in different zone uh, you have to be a, a different dog lover type of dog owner or dog lover in order to live with the border collie border collie lives you you live with the border collie whereas for example with the beagle the beagle lives with you, <laughs> if, you if you know what i mean um Andri, Andrita uh, is asking, do you have any advice on what I can do to minimize the hair uh, shedding? Um, I have a mix of golden and Labra Labrador and she haven't, hasn't, she leaves a lot of hair. Uh, so you have a Labradoodle then, right? Labradoodle, I would say, Lab, Lab and golden. Uh, yeah, Labradoodles, they're you know, th that's interesting that you mentioned that. Uh, Labradoodles are considered one of those hypoallergenic, uh, non-shedding dogs, but apparently they're not. Uh, I did a video a while ago um, talking about this uh, topic that this breed of dogs, it, they have been marketed as non-shedding, uh, hypoallergenic dogs, but they're not. They, they do shed as well. And also, you ha will uh, uh, you'll be affected uh, by their uh, their shedding their skin, uh, even though they are marketed as hypoallergenic. So they do shed as well. Um, I do have few uh, Labrador doodles and Golden doodles in daycare, and I can see that they're shedding also all the time. And most dogs, when they shed, the reason they shed is because of uh, seasons changing so you have to be expecting uh, seasons when the seasons change or temperature change especially in this day and age with the global warming the weather is very uh, confusing one some few days or few weeks are, it's warm and then all of a sudden cools cools down and then warms up and goes up and down so all these things that happens their body is uh, reacting to the temperatures uh, in the air, and uh, they either put on more or uh, get rid of the hair. So that's something that happens naturally anyways. You can't control that. 
uh, the only thing that you can do is just brush them all the time. Just brush their fur as often as you can. Um, especially if you have a dog who's shedding all the time a lot, brushing every day is the key. If you brush them every day, you'll see that the shedding will uh, be reduced as well. Uh, I used to walk dogs as a, uh, Amir is saying, I used to walk dogs as an uh, apprentice when I uh, dropped out of school and I'm hoping to start some work experience in boarding kennel soon. Uh, yeah, it's a good opportunity for you to get involved, to learn about dogs and get experience about uh, dogs. Um, and boarding kennels are great places to start daycares. Uh, vet offices, places like that are good places. Uh, and I'm glad you, you started with walking dogs. You know, just walking dogs itself is a good um, opportunity to gain experience about dogs. Uh, isn't a Labradoodle a mix of lab and poodle? Uh, yes. Um, yes, it is. Um, Oh, sorry, I made a mistake. Yeah, lab and golden. Sorry, I didn't. I, my mistake. Yes, you're correct. Lab and golden. Okay, lab and golden. I, okay, I thought it was lab and poodle. Uh, lab and golden. Hmm, that's a good mix too. Yes, they do shed a lot. <laughs> so yeah, brushing is uh, it's a good um, good option. Thank you, Sarah. I'll brush her once a day. One day. Yes, that's a good option, a good uh, choice. You know, brushing your dog every day doesn't have to be a task. It's an opportunity for you to connect with your dog and, and you know, interact with your dog. You know, you, you don't have to seriously brush. Just make it an, an event that you do on a daily basis. You connect and interact with your dog. And meanwhile, you brush as well. So think of it that way. So yes, so uh, I wanted uh, also to mention that I'm planning to go live every Tuesday at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. I'm trying to make this a weekly uh, event. Uh, so make sure to join me every Tuesday on this channel right here at this around this time to ask your questions. Let's talk about dogs. Uh, so I, want, I wanted to quickly mention uh, one thing that, you know, many dog owners, they say, oh, I have, a, I have a trained dog, but my dog is still doing that. Um, it, it, when it comes to training dogs, when we talk about training, training has few stages, it has the introduction level um, to the dog. You know, when you're t training a dog, there is a time that you're introducing the behavior or the commands to the dog. So that's the intro. And then it becomes uh, in uh, beginners. So your dog is starting to get the idea. And then there's a point at intermediate level. That's the time that you start uh, practicing your those commands or those behaviors in a little bit more uh, um, challenging environments. We call it the three Ds, uh, distance, uh, duration, and distractions. We're adding more Ds to the situation. And then comes to uh, expert level, which is your dog now. It knows every command and every behavior that you've been trying to teach your dog. Now it knows it, and now you expect them to give you that behavior. That's when you can say, I have a trained dog. So to get there, it takes a long time to get, you know, from introduction to, um, you know, to get to that expert level, I would say it takes about six months to a year. So you have to commit and, uh, and focus on training your dog for a six month or a year period till you say, I have a trained dog. That when you have a trained dog, you will see most of the bad behaviors are going to fade out. That's the benefits of training a dog. When you train a dog, you're 
all all your those bad behaviors they're gonna go away because your dog is more connected to you more connected to human uh, therefore it's not focused on what to do and what not to do because now you're communicating to your dog your dog knows what to do what not to do how to behave how not to uh, do certain things in certain situations so that's those are the benefits of it but one of the things that I hear over and over that many of my fans and many of my viewers and many of my clients, they say, you know, we've done training with my dog, but my dog is still doing this and that or barking or doing this and that. That means you haven't accomplished the training. You've done the beginners or intro, intro to training, but you haven't done, you haven't accomplished the training. Accomplishing a training set, uh, training a dog takes a long time, takes a, a, a good six months to a year to get results. So focus on that. Um, you should do a list on Amazon of, of pets, pets products you recommend. I would buy them. Oh, great. <laughs> uh, one of the things uh, about, um, you know, um, my not uh, I don't want to say I'm special or perfect. Uh, one of the things that uh, I focus on, I focus on training dogs without the use of treats, food, aversive tools, forced domination, or being alpha, right? So I don't train dogs using this. So when I don't use this stuff, there are very, 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 very limited products that I can use. I don't rely on products, that's the thing. And many companies, they contact me, they say, you know, we want you to endorse this product or these treats or those treats. The thing is that I don't use them. I don't want dog owners to use tools and be dependent on tools and gadgets because then you lose that connection with your dog. When you depend on harness or when you depend on treats or when you depend on tools or gadgets to train your dog, you lose that one-on-one -on -one connection with your dog. You want to be using yourself, your connection, your communication uh, to connect with dogs. So that is one of the reasons that I have a hard time connecting myself to products. Uh, um, but uh, eventually I should be able to find some products that will align with my uh, philosophy and my method. But yes, thank you for um, sharing that uh, tip with me. I will, I will definitely focus on those. Um, that's an awesome idea, yes. Um, ooh, what what just happened? Did anyone else video fade out? Uh, fade out, I don't know. Is there any problem with the video? Are you guys finding any problem? Uh, it seems to be going smoothly today. I don't think I have any problem, but um, hopefully everything is going well. No, I haven't had any problem, great. Uh, so that was number one. Number two, the other thing is I hear some of the myths that I hear is, oh, sorry, the phone is ringing on the background, uh, is that people say, oh, I have a great dog. My dog is great, but uh, there is this behavior that my dog does or that behavior that my dog does that is driving me crazy. So this happens uh, when I go for a training, like say, private training with uh, dog owners, sorry, the answering machine is working on the background. I hope it's going to be okay. Um, when I go for private training or, or something like that, you know, the dog owner will say, you know, we only need you to help us with this problem. Everything else is okay. But with this problem is the one that is driving us crazy. So it could be any problem, right? Could be, let, let's say, barking could be jumping, could be being aggressive, could be pulling on the leash, could be whatever problem it is, right? Um, so when I start uh, working with these people, I say, okay, so it's the barking the problem. Is there anything else that you need help with? They say, no, everything is okay, except that my dog also, uh, you know, barking is barking, 
but except that, you know, sometimes he jumps on the counter as well. I say, okay, anything else? Uh, sometimes he barks at neighbor. That's all, but it's okay. Uh, anything else? Oh, sometimes he digs a hole, dig a hole, digs a hole in the in the yard as well. But that's okay. I cover it. But this is the problem that I want you to help. So one of the things that you have to realize, if I start working with a person, for example, this could be uh, you as well. If one thing is bothering you, you're forgetting about all other little things that are there, but you're not. Uh, you're not. Th those little problems are not pissing you off, but this main one is pissing you off. So therefore you ignore the other ones, but you're focused on this one, this big problem. So I want you to focus on all of these problems. Each one of them is connected to the other. Each one of them is causing the other behavior to get worse. So what I want you to do is address all of the behaviors. So when you're helping your dog to, or training your dog, or you're working with your dog, you have to address all of the problems. So for instance, if the barking is your main problem, but there is a little bit of jumping, a little bit of chewing, a little bit of digging, a little bit of uh, stealing toys or food or things, those also have to be addressed. And once you address those little ones, you'll see this big one is going to be solved uh, or fade away automatically. That's a that's a a, a very um, big tip that I can share with you. You have to solve all the little ones. If your dog is making any little mistakes, you have to address them as well. You can't ignore them just because it doesn't bug you or it doesn't bother you as much as this one. It doesn't mean that you have to ignore it. You have to address every little problem. So that's my um, misunderstandings of dogs number two. And number three is that many dog owners, they tell me that I feed my dog the most expensive food, but yet my dog has this problem, that problem is diarrhea, this and that. One of the things that I want you also to understand is the price that you pay for the food doesn't mean that it's a good quality. In this day and age, we have a lot of competitions where you can buy the cheapest food or most valuable food, but it doesn't mean that is the best food. When it comes to your dog's food, I want you to understand that you can't judge by the price. You have to judge by the quality of the food. Now you're going to say I pay the I pay 20 bucks for a bag of food for a month for my dog. That's 20 bucks that you're spending for a dog food to just feed for a month. $20 a month, that's you can tell what kind of quality it that food is. Even if you're paying $200 for a bag of food, you have to understand that just because you paid $200, it doesn't mean that it's a good food, that it's good for you, for your dog. All that, all that means is that company is charging you a lot more for the same food that you would pay $20. The $20 bag of food and $200 bag of food are the same thing, the same quality. Uh, they don't have a good quality when it comes to kibble or dry food. If you're paying for your dog's food in a bag of food, you're not paying, you're not feeding your dog a good food. The other thing that you have to understand is every bag of food has an expiry date. The expiry date is not from the day that you open the bag. The expiry date is until the bag is kept closed. That could be a year for two years. Once you open a bag of kibble or dry food, that food was already toxic. It becomes, once it's into the open and introduced air and heat and temperature to the food, it becomes even double the toxins. So once you introduce air to that food, that food becomes um, rancid. It becomes the the oxi the, uh, the uh, oxidated. 
uh, all the oil and everything is already all the nutrition and all the mm, stuff that it was there was already there now it becomes toxins so i want you to understand this and focus on thinking about providing and giving and feeding your dog a good fresh food instead of kibble or dry food as you may know or not i don't recommend recommend feeding our dogs kibble or dry food. Uh, that's because um, kibble or dry food is not species appropriate diet. You would have a lot of health issues developing your dog if you feed your dog kibble or dry food. So those are my three main things that I wanted to talk to you today. And also, let me see if I can share this with you as well. Uh, and also, if you want, uh, I have just finished uh, making a few online courses that you can join today and, you know, learn more about your dog, start training your dog. I'm going to share the link in the chat line. Um, so these are courses that I've created for you. Everybody was asking me, how do I deal with this? How do I deal with that? These are specific um, courses that I've created for each individual dog owner. So you can, I don't know if you can see here, I have a board that I've been working on. So I have an online course that has been there, but I have moved it to a new platform. It's in the new platform and the link is in the, uh, in the chat line. Uh, so now you can register and start training your dog using my system, my method of dog training without the use of treats and food anytime online. I have a, a course called a dog's five essential needs. Everything that you need to provide for your dog on a daily basis. There is a course that you can uh, join and it's, and it's finished and ready to go. The other course is leash walking course. Many dog owners have problem walking their dog on a leash. So I've created this course for you to go and join. Yes, these are, these are paid courses. You have to pay for these courses, but I have one free course as well that you can join. So the link is there in the course. You can go and learn more. I have a free course there. I give you an intro of, to my system of dog training. Uh, that you can join and learn the system. And if you like, you can uh, register for other courses as well. Uh, coming soon, I will have a puppy training course as well uh, available. Uh, at the moment, I'm working on that course. So these are the courses that I wanted you also to know uh, that is available. Uh, Wonder in the blanket is in the house as well says hello Sarah. i mean i'm late but here thank you for being here we're almost at the end of the live session uh just wanted to let you know that first of all i will be trying to go every tuesday at 11 a.m pacific standard time live and every saturday there would be a video uh, uh, available for you on my channel uh, the other thing is that I wanted to share with you that I have some online courses available at the moment, so you can uh, join as well. And the other thing is that uh, next month, uh, next video, I'm working on it, but it's going to be a great video, I guarantee you. I hope you're going to watch it. Uh, it's a surprise. It's a different style, but uh, very um, informative, very interact uh, entertaining and very uh, interesting video. I hope you're gonna like that too. So I hope you enjoyed this live session. I really appreciate you being here, everybody. Uh, thank you for being live with me here. I enjoyed this session. Uh, I'm gonna try to make this on a, a weekly routine. We'll come and join and talk about dogs. And if you have any questions, leave those questions in the comments area and I will answer them right away or as soon as possible. And until next time, have fun with your dogs.